Oh, actually, you know what? The countdown ticker, I clicked on the go live button, Kareem, instead of the countdown ticker. So preview for you guys, you'll see us in just a second. <laughs> All right, so hopefully that was that was fun. Can you hear me yet, Kareem? Can you hear me talking? Can you I hear me can. Talking? <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Brenda Muller from Muller Marketing. If you watch me enough on these LinkedIn Lives, you know that I never make mistakes, but sometimes I have learning experiences and I just had a learning experience. <laughs> um, a couple of my past guests, Kareem, I had the mistake where I clicked on the, the countdown ticker and then at the end you have to click on go live and I forgot to do that. In your case, I clicked on go live before I clicked on the countdown ticker. <laughs> so it kind of went like the opposite Reverse. order of things. But at any rate, Kareem, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you, Brenda? Good. I am doing delightful and I'm looking forward to our uh, conversation here today. And what I'd like to do, Kareem, before we get started is I just want to welcome anybody um, that may be watching us. We're live streaming right now on Facebook, LinkedIn and YouTube. If you are watching on any of those networks, I would love it if you could please drop a comment below because when you comment, we know that people are watching and that the live stream is working. Every now and again, we get a little hiccup from StreamYard where it's kind of like the, the ketchup in a bottle and it's, it needs to be kind of like banged on it a little bit <laughs> and the live stream's not working. So when you leave a comment, it lets us know that, yep, the live stream is working, we're out there. And then, little bonus for you guys, some added visibility, I'll pull your comments up on screen. So we can see right now, we've got Mary watching us from Houston, Texas. And I'd love it if you could do exactly what Mary did. Just let us know where in the world you're watching from, what city, state, country, where are you watching from? And this is gonna be a nice kind of segue to the topic for today, because Kareem's gonna be um, guiding us into discussion about our bucket list vacations. But before we do that, um, I wanna just talk a little bit, Kareem, about um, you and I and how we met, um, or how we became connected, I, I should say, because we've never actually met in person. I think we Correct. were introduced during COVID, if I'm remembering we correctly, right? We were, exactly. Yeah, and it was through a uh, connection I have from Inforum, um, Terry Barclay, who's the president and CEO, and I believe um, you're you're friends with Terry. Is that how how you know her? Yes, we are friends and travel buddies too. Oh, awesome! Good to know. Well, um, I I'm not sure if Terry's watching right now. If not, I'll tag her in the comments below and make sure she gets a copy of the video. So thank you, Terry, for the introduction. But mm -hmm. Kareem, um, you and I were working with each other over the past few months, and I was helping you with your company page on LinkedIn and learning about your business as a as a part of that. And um, we had such a great conversation. And I said, hey, how about you come on a LinkedIn Live with me sometime and let's talk about, um, and I, I kind of feel like everyone, Kareem, is probably like in the same boat as me. Like when COVID hit, any plans we had for vacations for the foreseeable future were probably just, you know, um, put to the bottom of the list. Yeah. But we know this will end at some point. And um, when I asked you to come on and you said, let's talk about, is now the time to plan your bucket list vacations? I'm like, I think all of us in our minds right now are doing that, right? Yeah. We're starting to go through it. So before we jump into that conversation, why don't you take a few minutes, tell us a little bit about who you are, a little bit about your business, and then we'll jump in. Sure, thanks, Brenda. Well, I moved to Detroit about 11 years ago now, so it's been a while. I'm a native New Yorker and I have a musical background. So I actually grew up thinking that I would be a classical flutist in an American orchestra. Wow. And, yeah. And I led that life for a while. I studied music and had great travel experiences, coincidentally, through the arts and proceeded with music all the way through graduate school and unfortunately developed a performance injury. And so oh, I, really? couldn't, I couldn't play anymore, but I still wanted to stay in the arts. So then I switched over to arts administration. And that's how I ultimately made it to Detroit. I was working for the Detroit Symphony Orchestra for about eight years, which was incredible. Wow. I love the DSO and so have a great relationship there and was involved with fundraising and with community relations. And over my tenure there, there was all this energy that continues to build in Detroit, as you know, around mm -hmm. entrepreneurialism. And I thought to myself, could this be my moment now? And, and what what can I do? What would I want to do? 
And I thought how travel was always my other love in addition to music and started networking, speaking with people in the industry and also speaking with my colleagues at the DSO and saying, I have this bug and I want to see how, what I can do with this and where it can go. And mm -hmm. the rest is history. I started out planning trips for family and friends and mm -hmm. was introduced to referrals. And all of a sudden I just had this new world and this new life where I was traveling the globe and operating in multiple different time zones and, and learning so much about different cultures and people. That's amazing. So it sounds like this is kind of a, um, and I want to call it a hobby because it's probably a life passion for you that, that converted into a career for you, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's awesome. So, so let's let's jump in and let's we're gonna get this conversation started. And I'll encourage you guys to continue to leave your comments, and then we're gonna have you ask some answer some other questions later on. Um, but let us know where in the world you're watching from, because that helps us to kind of know how many people we're reaching from different places. I see Jack from Philadelphia, and Wendy is close to home in Michigan, and you and I are both in Metro Detroit. Mm -hmm. um, Kareem, but I know people are watching from all over. So continue to throw your comments. It's always interesting to see. So let's talk about this. Is this the time to plan our bucket list vacations, Kareem? Why or why not? Yes, it is. It definitely is the time. And and we've all had this period where things have been put on hold and many of us have moved trips off to next year already. And we've really had time to think about what we want to see, what we want to do, what our values are, what we want to show our family experiences we want to share with our loved ones. So I think we've all come up with this list already. And in the quarantine that all of us have gone through, we've started putting together these ideas. And the industry has responded in many ways too. And I, I'm sure a lot of people who are tuned in have seen these virtual tours that are happening both live and of museums and things like this. There are videos online. There are all these resources that weren't as readily available or in such frequency now where you can, if you've always wanted to go to Australia, you can have a live stream from Ayers Rock and see what's happening there. Wow. So, you know, now is a perfect time to get that list put together. Mm -hmm. And also suppliers and destinations are being very flexible with planning. So they understand that even as we look to next year, things aren't certain, timing isn't certain. So in many cases, there are flexible deposit options, flexible cancellation terms. Uh, there's really this willingness and, and welcoming from all over the world because they, they want us. We want to engage with each other and learn from each other. And we want to make that as convenient as possible and on a timeline that works for everyone. Right. Right. Because I got to imagine everybody's kind of in the same boat. Like we've we've grown comfortable with with the times that we're in right now and kind of making um, concessions and accommodations to our home life, our work life. And, you know, like even the summer vacations, I'm like, well, you know, or the, the holiday vacations, we're not going to plan going anywhere this year. But I'm kind of thinking at this point, like I'm looking at these four walls within my office <laughs> as I'm getting guessing a lot of the people that are viewing it. And you start like there's days I'm like, I'm looking out the window and I'm like, oh, where would I go if I could go anywhere in the world? And I also think we're reflecting upon, um, you know, this has caused a lot of us to reflect upon our mortality. The fact that this disease has been claiming so many lives and it's touched, you know, someone we all know, um, many people. And I'm, I'm, you know, it's been devastating, but it makes us think about what if I wasn't around a year from now? Where, Where is that bucket list place that I've always wanted to go? And you know what? Maybe when, when we get out of this cream, we got to like my husband and I were always talking about going like Turtle Island, Fiji, right? Like that's our bucket list. So, wow, so maybe we need to book that trip and start <laughs> looking for pictures of it right now. Yeah. Start meeting your friends there. Start planning. <laughs> yeah. No, it, absolutely. So if you're just joining us, we're talking a little bit about bucket list vacations. And this is a bit of what Kareem does for her his business. So I want to kind of ask the question. I hear the term bucket list. Um, what makes a destination a bucket list frame? It's a great question. I think it really comes down to the person first and foremost. So there are experiences that we've all had that have made us who we are, that have led to our different values. And often there are destinations that tie into it, whether it's your heritage, whether it's a hobby you have, mm -hmm. and that makes something bucket list for you. Everyone's list is going to be different. So I think it always starts from that basis. But then of course, because of media and social media, we have these destinations that are synonymous with bucket lists. And I can 
you know, go through a list of 20 or 50 or, <laughs> and I'm sure everyone listening can as well. And I think bucket lists from a media perspective or a mass market perspective often is about perception of accessibility. Mm -hmm. So a place that's very far flung that maybe you can only get to once is bucket list because it's something you want to check off. Okay. So going to Florida would not be bucket list for me as a Michigander. Is that what you're saying? It, it could be if say <laughs> your great grandmother uh, was from Florida and okay. had a treasure there hidden for your generation of the family and you, you never left the state of Michigan, then absolutely Florida can be bucket list or Petoskey can be bucket list. It really is dependent on the person and your experience. Now, for those people watching, they, they don't know if they're don't, not familiar with Petoskey. What's what's Petoskey? Could you tell uh, us? Northern Michigan, our, our beautiful Northern Michigan, which ah. I certainly don't take for granted going mm -hmm. up there almost every summer. But for us yeah. Michiganders, just driving, getting that in the car four or five hours and just being in paradise by the water. Yeah, it's great. And whenever I hear the word Petoskey, I always think about the Petoskey stones. And I think about my kids learning about Petoskey stones in school and they have little intricate um, elements as a textures as a part of them. Um, but yeah, Michigan, we have such a beautiful place here and, and we have very, um, uh, very suburban type of areas and then very rural areas. And, the, you know, the co whole concept of going up north for the summer. Um, getting out of the city and, and visiting our, our travel destinations is something that's a part of our part of our local heritage here. So what are some um, some other top bucket list destinations? What are the big places that people are like, oh, Kareem, I want to plan a trip to go to X. Like, what are those big places? Sure. So I'll list many. Uh, Egypt. So I think there are many people that want to see the pyramids. They want to see the Sphinx. They want to feel the dry air. They want to learn about Egyptian heritage and see hieroglyphics. Uh, Australia, so this whole fantasy of getting down under, whether it's to snorkel in the Great Barrier Reef or to see kangaroos um, or to climb the Sydney Harbor Bridge. Mm. Safari, and yeah. in particular, the Great Migration in Kenya, Tanzania. We've all probably seen that on the Nature Channel, on the Discovery Channel, just millions of zebras and wildebeest and being right there where you can literally feel the air whizzing by your face as these stampedes go and you see the clouds of smoke coming up. And destinations like Yellowstone National Park, you know, places we have right here in our backyard here in America that are beautiful and iconic and people travel from all over the world to see here, Alaska, Many consider our final frontier, yeah. huge state, so much to see, whether it's doing a cruise on the coast and seeing whales or going up past the Arctic Circle. Hmm. And then Are these places you've all gone? Because the way you're describing these, it's not just like Kareem read about them and he knows. I mean, it, it, to me, it feels like I can see you being there. Have you been to all these places? I have been to wow. all of these places so far. There's and this, this, all, <laughs> not and this, this reminds me too, Kareem, of your website. Um, and I, when you talked about Alaska, I think you have like, I'm going to, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to pull it up on screen oh, right cool. now. But there it is right there. The um, I'm going to point over here, the cruise ship out in the middle, you know, and mm -hmm. then these, these humongous mountains and um, glaciers that you're kind of driving by. And I, I see some of these other destinations. Yep. Um, so it sounds like, you know, you have a lot of insights into these different experiences and, you've seen a lot of these places. So what a lucky guy to have had that life opportunity, right? Very fortunate, very fortunate. Yeah. So we're going to keep moving along on the conversation. Um, what's on your bucket list? I'm kind of curious as we're talking about like, <laughs> what are the big ones for other people? What about for you? Are there destinations you haven't been to yet that you'd like to visit to? Sure. Antarctica tops the list. And <laughs> for those of us that are going through fall about to be winter you're probably listening to me saying why would you want to <laughs> just sit around in michigan antarctica will come around to you <laughs> exactly but i want to see the penguins i want to see these huge icebergs i want to hear the silence from travelers we've sent to antarctica they often come back saying it's otherworldly it's a destination as close to you know going to another planet as you can get here on earth I want to see those emperor penguins that are bigger than me. Are they really? They're bigger mm -hmm. than humans, really? Yeah, they can be like six feet tall. Some of wow. these, are, they're they're massive. 
Awesome. And New Zealand. So I've not mm -hmm. been to New Zealand yet. I've spent time in Australia and love Australia. But again, as I'm putting together these bucket list trips for people, oftentimes I say, well, I want to see the Milford Sound and I want to be in the Marlborough wine region tasting. And, and I want to climb these volcanoes and take a helicopter to the top of a mountain and ski down. So, I mean, New Zealand is so known for these incredible otherworldly landscapes. The Lord of the Rings series obviously is a popular mm -hmm. culture connecting point for people to that landscape. Uh, but I really want to be there and see it firsthand. It reminds me a little bit. I have a friend, um, his name is Nick and he's a real estate agent. And um, we work with him when we bought our house last year. And, I, and as we were touring around houses, I remember asking him at one point, I'm like, Nick, do you ever like get to a point where you're like showing somebody your house and you're like, Gosh, I want to buy this house. <laughs> like, I imagine it has to be the same way for you, Kareem, where you're researching new destinations for people. And I know um, you work with both individuals and then you do some group trips and like mm -hmm. anniversaries and surprise trips and yep. things like that. Um, exactly. So you probably are getting, you know, all sorts of destinations. But, you know, I, I imagine sometimes you're researching them and you're like, well, I want to go there. Right. Yeah. And I'm inspired by what inspires mm -hmm. others. And oftentimes it's not um, the the top 10 list that we typically will see in the media. So I, I also really want to and enjoy remote location. So mm -hmm. I'd love to also go to what's called the stands. Many of these countries I still can't pronounce myself, I'm embarrassed to say, but um, Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan, uh, I see images of them. And again, I've sent travelers in these landscapes and cultures that really we don't see or interact with in our daily lives that part of that attracts me also intellectually yeah no i gotta ask a question too because i'm i'm not a world traveler i'll have to say i mean i've been to canada so i've inter i've traveled internationally quote unquote and, and that's about it and i remember you know back when i um was first getting out of college i was i wanted to go to germany i took a couple years of german in high school and my sister did too and we were going to go to germany together and then um she got married and started having kids and i got married and started having kids and here we are now, <laughs> we haven't gone. Um, but sometimes I think about there's a draw of going to destinations I've never been to before and being in different countries and different cultures. And then there's also a little bit of like anxiety I have about being in different cultures and different destinations. And then what are what are the things I need to worry about aside from the passports and immunizations and things like that. But is that something that organizations like yours help with in terms of like helping people know what they need to know, I guess? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's part of, you know, what motivates, I think, many of us in the industry is because we all have these dreams. And with any dream, when it starts out, it seems like it's not achievable. So how do I even start to do that? Yeah. And say your dream is to visit South Africa, which is also one that tops many bucket lists and is so mm -hmm. far away in such a different culture. I really think it's such a privilege that, again, it's a place I've known. I've been several times. And I can start to remove those barriers for people. And the barrier can be as complex as apartheid and how that affects mm -hmm. the culture there and what any person of any background is going to feel like interacting. Or it can be as simple as the food. Is there going right. to be something for me to eat? Is there, you know, quote unquote, American food there? Right. And what are the entrance requirements? What do I do when I get there? What side of the street do they drive on? So that's really fun through that whole learning process and removing the barriers. You really, or we really try to show just how accessible the world is to everyone mm -hmm. and how those people in South Africa or Germany are very mm -hmm. much just like we are here. And it just reminded me as you were talking to your, your company name, and I'm gonna pull up on screen right now so people can see it's, it's called the culture traveler. It's not just, you know, travel by Kareem LLC, it's not that, but it's the culture traveler. So when you were creating the name of your company, is that something, I mean, intentional as you thought about the name, in, including the word culture as a part of it? Can you give me a little bit of that backstory? Sure, sure. It definitely was. And because of my mm -hmm. art background, primarily when I first started my company, I thought that I certainly mm -hmm. would want to focus on cultural experiences related to the arts. But as I mm -hmm. got deeper, into that's, it. Also, that's Kareem's next client calling right now. <laughs> it's Terry Barclay going, oh, wait, I thought you were, oh, that's today. 
<laughs> I'm ready. And I did put on my do not disturb. So I'm sorry about that. It's no, and you very... know what? This, this is what we do. We roll with it. Sometimes we have barking dogs and I, and then people are like, I'm sorry. I'm like, oh, you have a dog? Where's the dog? Can, I, can you bring the dog into camera? So I just roll with it, you know, but we just, we just kind of keep going with it. <laughs> yeah, Siri did not listen to me today, but I'll talk to her after. <laughs> She'll be scolded. Yeah. Yeah, so, but back uh, to the, go ahead. the name, sure. Yeah. So, so I knew that those arts experiences would uh, be a filter through which I designed trips and and thought about destinations. But mm -hmm. it also became broader because culture isn't just art. It isn't just music. It's food. It's what we drink. It's how we interact. It's how we dress. Mm -hmm. So, the, the more I grew into the business and the business grew, the name just became perfect and synonymous with what we do and really unmasking these destinations. And for Germany, to use your example, yeah. um, there is such a rich musical tradition and art tradition as there is in many countries, but say you're going to Guatemala, for example, mm -hmm. there's a rich culture of textile and food and other things. So finding those cultural elements that both connect us and make us unique is something I find fascinating and our travelers really appreciate. That's awesome. So I got to ask Kareem for you, like what's your next destination? When when, and where will that be? Mm -hmm. Well, I think everyone can relate to the moving target of when we're going to get to yeah. our next destination. So planned was to go to Brazil hmm. and I've not been to Brazil and that's been on the books for the end of the year this year. and. And again, just being very transparent with everyone, I'm not sure if that's gonna be possible. You know, the country is open, but we all, this is a very personal time for all of us in determining at any given moment how comfortable we are traveling and where we wanna travel. So I haven't made that decision yet, although tickets are booked, hotels are booked. Mm -hmm. Again, those people on the other end are being very flexible, which all of us appreciate at this time. Uh, but I think, Going back to my earlier comment, Antarctica might be the next one because I'm looking a bit further ahead for that to uh, winter of 2021 and mm -hmm. trying to put together a small group. We do these small group journeys. So I'm tapping people yeah. and, uh, and saying, is Antarctica also on your bucket list? Is that somewhere where you'd like to go? Uh, mm -hmm. So I think that may be my next big bucket list trip. And and I want to have a big one after, after COVID and being right? here. Want to yeah. do something that's iconic, and I don't think I'll jump in the water. I don't think I'll do the plunge there. But I'll, <laughs> <laughs> I'll certainly enjoy seeing the penguins and you know doing some ice hiking and things like that in Antarctica. That sounds amazing. And I read once somewhere, and I can't remember where it was, but I read that um, part of the travel experience, the gratification of the travel experience, it's not just the being there; it's the planning of it. Right. And I think about my friend Marie. Um, she plans every year a girl's trip to New York and she like has a binder literally. And she's like mapping out restaurants and shows they're going to see. And, and everything is pretty much from the time you land until the time they leave. They're doing things. They're not sleeping very much at all. Um, but I think about the months and months of planning. They go into just this girl's trip of doing that. And and probably for for you, for you, Kareem, and for others that are watching as well, it's it's not just the being there. It's the the planning and the research and everything that's going into it, because you you get to enjoy that experience, don't you, Kareem, before you actually get there through that, that Absolutely. research. Absolutely, and you're discovering what you don't know and yeah. just the many different facets to a destination, and you find these different angles and avenues, and you realize, well, I didn't realize that this destination was famous for that, whether it's some sort of handicraft or a dance or a type of music, and you wanna learn more about it, or I didn't realize this author I really love is from there and then you want to learn more about their background mm -hmm. so it, so it's fascinating and it also helps you think about the types of experiences you want to have when you're there in destination and and beyond so it, mm -hmm. there's often a progression to when we go to one place and then what the next place on our bucket list turns into you know, yeah i have a fun exercise i like to do where Every year, I'll start off the year just by writing down, say, top five or seven places I want to go mm -hmm. and kind of putting it away. 
And then at the end of the year, seeing what happened, did I get there? And then comparing it and seeing, well, this one's been on the list for a while. Did I did it mm-hmm. finally happen? Or, you know, I really wanted to do this one. So this one happened right away. So there's the anticipation in the planning process, the connections you make, the new people you meet. Mm-hmm. It's really fun. Yeah, absolutely. And I even was thinking as you're talking, it's it's the planning leading up to it. It's the experience itself. And then it's also um, the post travel experience where you get to relive uh, those moments, either it's through photo or so- social media posts. Um, it's by retelling it to your family and friends. And, you know, in your case, it's probably to your clients as well, right? Kind of sharing those experiences. And how you're changed. I mm-hmm. think more so from the people you interact with, yeah. they will pick up how you've changed once you've seen something or experienced something. You'll you'll notice it as well. I mean, mm-hmm. I feel as though if you go on a safari, you're not the same person when you come back after you've seen a lion face to face or after you've seen an African sunset or, you know, an example I used earlier, climbing the Sydney Harbor Bridge. You're when you see images of Australia in the future, they're going to be different. You're going to really feel that wind on your mm-hmm. face. You're going to feel the energy you use to exert the climb. Um, it's exhilarating. Yeah. And it's it's probably a little bit too like you feel like you have a connection because there's that familiarity now. It's not just a a picture that looks cool, but it's it it takes you back in that split second in your mind to being there and and the sights, the sounds, the smells, you know, everything is probably combining kind of that moment. And you have the firsthand knowledge of what it's like. So for yeah. me, that's a, a big thing. I, I guess I've always been curious, but I want to Mm -hmm. see things and know things firsthand. So if Mm -hmm. I see a nature show or hear a news report, that's great. You know, I take it all in intellectually and I may believe it or not, but I really want to see it. And I want when people ask me about an experience to have firsthand knowledge to say, you know, I've met X type of person in their environment and this is the experience I had. Mm -hmm. Or I saw, you know, these animals in the wild and this is how they interacted with each other and with people. Um, Oh, it's amazing. I want to go see a lion right now. (laughs) Or one of those giant penguins or something. Or to be honest, I mean, if we're being honest, we're all friends here. I just want to get out of the house at some point. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe I'll go to the Detroit Zoo in the meantime um, (laughs) until I can get to the African Safari. I don't know. (laughs) There's a fantastic penguin uh, house there at the Detroit Zoo. Do you, do you, I mean, in the meantime, since people aren't doing as much travel abroad, do you help people with traveling um, in their home states? I mean, you know, where can we drive to in Michigan? Um, yeah. What other, I mean, do you, do you help with local travel or is it just international travel? Absolutely. We do a lot of domestic travel and especially mm-hmm. now in the times of COVID, we've yeah. seen the demand really increase. And, and it's great because we have so much beauty here. I know personally speaking, I take our country for granted. I, I still haven't seen many of the incredible national parks. Yeah. And it's it's great to help people discover what's right in their own backyard. So whether it's the cross country trip that you've always wanted to take or the museum or the small town that's an hour drive away or the mm-hmm. little inn that your friend stayed in 10 years ago that they always talk about that you want to experience yourself. So that's been great. And it's been also wonderful to see how the tourism dollars have been redirected and and invested here at home during this time, especially over the summer with national parks. Mm, It was probably the the busiest period ever for, for national parks. So on the one hand, if you were going to escape and have complete isolation and have these vistas all on your own, uh, maybe not so much once we were into August and everyone was was flocking there, but it's great that we're now really appreciating more, I think, mm-hmm. what we have here and uh, and getting to know our country firsthand, experiencing mm-hmm. it firsthand. That's a really great point. And, um, and I agree, even, even for my family, I mean, we, the four of us went up north for the summer to a family cottage and it was, you know, just a few days, but on the way home, there was a couple like tourist destination spots we normally wouldn't have but we we got out and there was a lookout point over a river and 
you know, some trails and, and walking paths and things like that. And it was something we experienced that we never had done before. Mm -hmm. And if it hadn't been for COVID, I'll be honest, we probably wouldn't have because normally the, the, the vacations we would take as a family, it's get up there, get the vacation in, check the box and get home. Cause we got to get back to work right away. We got to get kids to school or camps or whatever. And this was like, it's, it slowed everything down for us. And we're like, eh, we don't have to be home anytime soon. So let's stop and, yep. and check out the local spots. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right, so what I want to do now, Kareem, is I want to kind of shift shift gears, and I've been asking you guys to comment below, and we're going to bring you into the conversation now. So we're going to kind of go out and see what kind of comments have been added from along the way, and I've been asking you guys some different questions, you know, favorite bucket list uh, destinations, I should say, and then we've also had other people joining with their, um, where are they watching from? So I'll be kind of intermixing um, those up on the screen here. Arifa says she's always wanted mm. to, to go to Japan. So there's a, a bucket list there. Uh, we have uh, Katura is uh, Finland and Sweden. So Heritage, Mr. and me. I'm not sure if those are places you want to visit or places you have visited, but it sounds like great destinations there. Paul is watching from Detroit. Hey, Paul, how are you doing today? Thanks so much. Uh, Robbie is joining us from Alaska. Nothing like the beauty of it. And to your point, Kareem, we live here in Michigan, um, but we sometimes don't look around us and we don't visit the local destinations. I'm curious, Kareem, you said Petoskey. What about in Southeast Lower Michigan? What's a favorite spot that you like to visit? Oh my gosh. Huh. I'm well, putting you on the spot here. This, putting, is, this was not a question you knew I was going to ask. <laughs> you are putting me on the spot. But I think here in the metro Detroit area, we have such incredible international destinations, frankly. So we have our art museum, Detroit Institute of Arts, where you could spend a whole weekend discovering mm -hmm. that museum. We have Orchestra Hall and our wonderful symphony orchestra. Yeah. We have the the dearborn community and and the henry ford museum and village so yeah. and and growing up in new york i found the same thing when you when you live in a city you often don't experience or take advantage of those tourist destinations unless a family member's visiting or a friend is visiting so true i think i maybe went to the empire state building once uh statue of liberty once these are places people come from all over the world to see so yeah. here in Southeast Michigan, again, um, our cultural institutions, a place like the Henry Ford, these are mm -hmm. right in our backyard and would love to see us right now during this period. It's really important for us to continue to support them. Yeah. So I encourage folks to do that and in their local communities to do that as well. Awesome. Yeah, I agree. There's so many local places to, to check out. And a lot of these, you can walk outside like the Henry Ford, you can walk outside. So we can still do the social distancing we can yep. still wear the masks and we don't have to worry about being around people indoors. So there's still ways we can navigate around. And I'm just gonna pop a couple of these additional comments up on screen here. Um, Aruba, and I kind of think about this tropical looking picture I have in the background. I think about bucket list for me, I like I gotta hit the tropical vacation spots first and then maybe um, other places to, to check out as well. Um, let's see, uh, Neil, I'm not sure if you wanna visit Wisconsin, or are you from Wisconsin? <laughs> maybe either of those, those two. Um, Neil, oh, maybe you're from this Wisconsin, Neil, because now he says Germany and Austria. Ah. That would make sense, right? <laughs> both beautiful countries. Um, how about, Kareem, have you been to any of or all of these places? Tahiti, Bora Bora, uh, Australia, New Zealand. So Beth has a lot of places on my bucket list there. I've been to Australia, mm -hmm. but Tahiti and Bora Bora, high, very, very high on my list and then New Zealand as well, so. Awesome, and then Lisa, hey Lisa, how are you? Australia and a safari, both on her bucket list. Mm -hmm. so awesome to yeah. see. And safari is addictive, I should say that much, because that was always on my bucket list before starting my business, and was one of the first trips that I did personally, and that I led when I started Culture Traveler, and I've since been on more than 30 or 40 safaris. So did you say you led a safari? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, wow, you're very I led, talented. <laughs> I've led I've led groups and participated in groups yeah. on safaris, but I always, you know, trust and have rangers that are there, professionals to to lead lead us into the wilderness. But so many different ways you can do safari by water, by plane, by helicopter, on a horse, walking. So yeah. 
Amazing. And I'm just loving um, folks as you guys are dropping your comments on here because I, I don't know about you, Kareem, I'm kind of like visualizing these different places mm -hmm. as they're talking and you probably are thinking in a, in an experiential visualization because you've been to many. How about yeah. Singapore and Taiwan? Have you been to either of those places, Kareem? Yes, I've been to Singapore and hi, Elizabeth. Thanks for tuning in. Singapore, synonymous with Singapore for me is food. I mean, it's an architectural mm -hmm. marvel as well, obviously, but the cuisine there is amazing. You can have the best meal of your life in a stand out of a, a paper cup, literally, mm -hmm. or in a super fancy restaurant. Just the, the food quality and the creativity there in Singapore is amazing. That's awesome. And I imagine there's probably um, different cuisines and foods you've tasted from all around the world. Kareem, anything particularly come to mind for you? Oh my that God. You talk about? Another really hard question. Uh, the past few years, I've spent the Thanksgiving holiday in Italy. Mm -hmm. Italy is often on many people's bucket list. There are so many experiences to be had there. So I just, you know, love, there are a few restaurants in Milan that I really love and think about the food there often. Uh, mm -hmm. Spent some time in South America, in Colombia. Mm -hmm. and a modern restaurant that was Colombian fusion uh, with kind of American contemporary. And I just remember it just being delicious, the the flavors there. So travel and many of our travelers travel for food. That's exactly. Yeah, I think about there's a, there's a show out there now. It's called and I'm going to not get this correctly, but it's like it's like Somebody feed Phil. Is that the one? It's, it's like heat, salt, oil or something. Am I getting it right? I don't know if it's the. it's like there's three words and it's like these are the three elements that really help to make food taste delicious. Yep. Maybe it's, is it fat, salt, oil? Have you heard of it, Kareem? I have, but I'm all the yeah. name is also eluding me. <laughs> yeah, I think it, I'm. I think it might be fat, fat, salt, heat. I don't know. Does anybody know? If you guys are watching and you know the name yeah. of the show, put it in comments. Is it something? It's like these are the three elements that. Like I remember, fat is one of them because there's butter and oil. My mouth is watering as I'm talking about this right now. <laughs> but it's like, and then they talk about different places and and the cuisines that are native um, to these destinations and how yep. each of those play an important element in the cuisine of the local destination. So yep. uh, we'll wait and see if that comment comes in. But as we um, start to kind of round the quarter on the conversation here, Kareem, I want to pull up your LinkedIn profile up on screen. And um, I actually want to tell people something we did in the pre-show. And I want to show the example. So um, Kareem, when I reached out and booked the show with you, I asked you for you know a couple of pieces of information. And one was your LinkedIn URL. And this is what you gave me. And this was like, this is the URL that you get when you first set up your LinkedIn account. It takes like what's on your profile and, in terms of your name fields. And then it adds a bunch of these alphanumeric stuff at the end. And it was 69 eight, nine, or six, nine, seven, eight, nine, two, two. And I was like, Kareem, okay, follow me along. And this literally took 30 seconds, you guys. I said, go to your profile in the upper right-hand corner where it says edit profile, click on that. And then there's a little link that says edit your custom URL. And you did, yep. and we fixed it. And now, voila, it's know, Kareem magic. George, right? Yeah. <laughs> Simple thing. And um, what's on your, what's in your header graphic on there on your profile, Kareem? Tell us about that. That's a, a shot from Antarctica. And that's, a view that you'll see in, in many places, there are these glaciers, and this is a glacier that has an arch. It's an arch glacier there. I mean, the landscape, and you'll see this in Alaska too. I have vivid yeah. memories of, you know, being on an expedition in Alaska and traveling through glaciers and the environment changes literally within 15 or 20 minutes. So you go out to a point and you come yeah. back and all the ice has moved. So now you have different formations and a different relationship that the ice has to the water and the color is different. So um, and Antarctica inspires me and I thought, wow, you know, this is one of the many reasons I want to go there. That's so pretty. It's it's picturesque. And as a marketer and somebody who does, you know, LinkedIn and stuff, this is like this is what you guys want to do. You want to put something in your in your profile header that speaks to your brand, your company, your career, your employer. I mean, Kareem, you've done all of those things in there, which is a really nice, um, nice element. Now, are you open to accepting invitations from people that are watching the show here, Kareem? Sure, absolutely, absolutely. Would love to hear from folks. Good, and what I would encourage you guys to do is if you visit Kareem's profile, uh, click on the connect button and then include a personal note. Let him know that you watched him on the show today. Maybe tell him your dream destination in there or something that you learned from watching or if it's inspired you. 
you know, but I like to always include a little bit of commentary in there in the invitation to connect because it helps to create a little bit of dialogue. Hey, we got a couple of people watching. Here it is. Salt, fat, ah, acid, heat. I was great. close. I think I, I don't remember Thank acid. You, Lisa. <laughs> but that's it. Thank you, Lisa. And it's it's on, I don't know if it's on um it the Food Network or is it like Hulu or Netflix? I don't remember. I was flipping through the TV one night and I was like, oh, it's interesting. But this is not the show that you guys want to watch at 1130 at night because you get so <laughs> hungry watching yeah, it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so 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 delightful to have had this conversation with you here today, Kareem. And as we start to wrap up, I just want to give you the opportunity. Um, any final comments or shout outs? Anything you want to say before we start to wrap up? Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. It's been a really fun conversation. I'm always up for and love talking travel. And I'd say for everyone listening, um, you know, stay positive. We're going to travel again. And travel has always been a personal decision for folks. I feel yeah. like travel has always been a privilege that you're able to, you know, leave your environment and explore a new environment. So I think we all just have to keep the faith and listen to ourselves and realize that this is a personal decision we all have to make when is the right time to travel again when we're going to be ready yeah. and when you are the world is going to be there ready to embrace you that's and a good point in, in all these destinations there's going to be a, a welcoming environment and atmosphere and really a need for the tourism mm -hmm. dollars frankly so um this crisis has impacted everyone and Many of these destinations can't wait to welcome us all back. I'm sure. And on that note, too, I mean, right now we're hearing so much conversation about buy local, support your local business, support your small business. And that's that's also supporting people like Kareem, you know, small business owners, entrepreneurs who are living their passion. So so reaching out to Kareem, whether it's connecting with him now or keeping him in mind. So when you are planning that the next bucket list destination um, travel experience, you know, booking with his services and, and you know, helping Kareem help, you know, help his business as well. Um, I really enjoyed this conversation today, Kareem, because it made me think about things beyond the four walls, like I said, of, of my office and even beyond um, our local community, beyond our state, thinking big. And I loved your point. It's such an inspirational point. This too shall pass. We are not going to be in this forever. It feels like it right now because it yes. feels like it's been. We're going through now. We went through kind of coming out of the winter in, in March, right? And then we went through spring, yeah. summer, fall. We're now going back into another winter season here. Yeah. Um, but this will, I mean, all of the experts are even saying this will pass at some point, this will move over. And to your point, I imagine all of these, these destinations um, that are, their industries are built on tourism are just waiting. And mm -hmm. um, they're, they're gonna be hungry for those, those travelers to come out to their community. So I imagine there's gonna be packages that are going to be out there um there's going to be a lot of a lot of opportunity i think out there for the world there, traveler there and and there are plenty mm -hmm. of places that are open now too there are mm -hmm. dozens and dozens of countries and places you can go now but again i think we all have to you know really go with what our comfort level is so if you're ready to travel now there are destinations that are ready to welcome you uh, but if your travel is going to happen later it's okay and those places are going to be there ready for you then awesome well, great closing comment there. So um, thank you all for watching here today. Thank you, Kareem, so much for sharing your insights. And if you haven't left a comment yet, I want to encourage you guys. Here's what I do. This is my little hack, because sometimes if you're watching this on the desktop and you leave a comment and then you click on comment, like the, the video goes away and you're like, oh, where is it? And then you got to go find it. This is what I do. Even when I watch other people's videos, I watch it on my desktop. And then when I want to comment, I go on, I find it on their activity feed on the LinkedIn mobile app and I comment on it from here. That way I don't disrupt the video as I was watching, right? So it's a little kind of little hack for LinkedIn Live because it can be a little bit wonky, a little bit hiccupy. But um, if you enjoyed the conversation today, leave a comment below for, for Kareem. And what I will do after the show here today, Kareem, is I'll, I'll share the links with you so you can go back on and, and see who is on and then, um, you know, add to the conversation here. So, so guys, continue. And even if you're watching this in a playback later on, please still leave a comment because Kareem will have the link and he'll be able to, to watch for those if you have any questions or observations for him. Great. All right, awesome. And then before we leave, I'm gonna ask you guys for two quick favors. And here are my favors. Um, the first is when you leave the video, come back in and click to share it. Share the video with someone in your network. If you haven't posted on LinkedIn yet this week, you could click to share it. And you could say something like, this video inspired me to start thinking about where I'm gonna travel after COVID. <laughs> you know, what's that dream bucket list destination for you? 
or maybe share it with somebody in a message. Um, you can share it on other platforms as well, but share the video with someone. And then if you'd like to learn about my upcoming shows and interviewees, um, if you can go to mellermarketing.com slash subscribe, and then you can join my VIP email list. So Kareem, what is, uh, what's next on the agenda for you today after you're done with the video here? I'm gonna watch another video. So some colleagues of mine are, are talking about just how do we care for our travelers during this time, which is a whole nother topic in itself. So we, talk, we touched on it earlier. So managing expectations for visiting destinations, et cetera. So I'm gonna support some colleagues by tuning into their interview. And then I think I'm just going to go for a walk. It's okay. we haven't plummeted into the colder temperatures yet. We've had a great past four or five days. So I'm just going to go outside and enjoy some nice fall weather. I agree with you. It's still cooler, but it's sunny here in Michigan and it's not frigid cold yet. It's still and, and there's something to be said with mental health too, Kareem, isn't there? And like getting outside and being outdoors. Yep. Yep. Seeing yeah. the safari that's here in Michigan with the deer and the squirrels and the hawks yeah. and the turkeys. <laughs> yeah, we do. We get a lot of local wildlife here that, you know, you don't, you know, you take it for granted because we see them all the time. But yeah. yeah, you can see deer when you're walking around. I mean, we see squirrels. I'm, I have a little bird feeder right outside of my window um, intentionally so I can see birds. There's a cardinal that landed there earlier. So it's kind of neat to see the wildlife and the nature that's outside. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, awesome. Well, thank you guys for your comments. I'll continue to load those up as we wrap up the conversation here today. Thank you, Kareem. It's been a delightful conversation. I hope to join you on one of those safaris someday, perhaps. That would be excellent. I'd love that. <laughs> It'd be a lot of fun. All right, guys, stay safe and stay healthy and keep those bucket lists going because this will end at some point and we'll yes. be able to get out there and venture into the world again. Uh, this has been Brenda Meller with Meller Marketing. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you guys online again soon. Take care, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you.